everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a story written for my channel by author Jojo and I really hope you enjoy it. It does have a New Year's theme to it uh, and Happy New Year by the way. We are officially in 2021. <laughs> And now that we are in 2021, it's time to get cozy, get comfortable, because it's about to get creepy. When the Clock Strikes Three on a New Year by author Jojo. I'm sure I can't be the only one who is waiting for 2020 to be over, counting down the days until this absolute disaster of a year would come to an end. Now, I didn't naively think that something as arbitrary as the changing of a year could solve all our problems, but it felt like a benchmark, a period of time that I could point to as being over. I think for me more than anything, it was just being able to tell myself that I had made it through. Despite all the anxiety, isolation, and doubt, I had managed to keep enough of my sanity to get through such a polarizing year. So I watched the clock avidly on the 31st, watched as each minute passed, imagining our little planet flying through space, getting ever closer to its full rotation around the sun. With bated breath, I sat in my living room, watching the TV, with just an hour left until the dawn of a new year. It was a time that any other year I would spend with friends and family. We would all be drinking and laughing together, barely paying attention to the time. This year, though, being social like that just wasn't an option, so I sat alone, waiting. On the TV, the clock got closer to twelve. I was only ten minutes away from the new year, and while the Times Square wasn't packed like it was other years, for obvious reasons, the ball still sat in the sky, ready to descend, and, as the last minutes closed in, it began to. It lowered closer and closer to the ground, and as it got within ten seconds of the new year, I started audibly counting down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. I felt an air of relief wash over me as the clock turned past twelve o'clock, launching us into the new year. For some reason, I had it in my head that some cataclysmic event was going to sweep over the land when such a disaster of a year ended, like it was some grand finale of 2020, going out with a bang and all that. Reaching for the TV remote, I clicked the power button and watched the screen turn black, showing a reflection of myself in it. I made it through the year. Standing up from the couch and setting the remote on the table, I decided to go make myself some hot chocolate. I'd originally planned to partake in some alcohol, but it just didn't feel the same without anyone to share it with. I watched the clock still, and my milk began to boil. It seemed like time was moving so much faster now that I wasn't waiting for anything. The milk had begun to bubble, and I was so fixated on watching the green digital numbers that I almost failed to notice. Eventually, the soft popping of bubbles caught my attention, and I pulled the pot off the stove. Brown powder mixed in with warm milk. The powder dissolved as I stirred until it all mashed into the same color. Lifting the cup to my face, I felt the soft heat rising from the liquid. It felt so nice, contrasting the cool air in my apartment. The smell of chocolate soothing my soul before I could even take a sip. With the warmth of the cup seeping into the palms of my hands, I headed back to the living room and set the cup down on the table before sitting. I watched my mouth open in the reflection of the dark TV as I waited for the chocolate to cool down enough to drink. Not realizing just how tired I was until making myself comfortable, I found it hard to keep my eyes open. Without managing to drink any of the chocolate I prepared, I drifted off to sleep. I was started awake by the sound of something dropping. It felt like I had just drifted off for a few minutes. 
sitting there trying to decipher if the noise I heard was the product of a dream or something had really fallen, I noticed steam was no longer rising from my hot chocolate. As I reached forward and grabbed the cup, my body shivered upon meeting with its chilled surface. Dipping my finger into the liquid confirmed that my hot chocolate had become regular chocolate milk. Not that I was too upset, as it was still something to quell the dry feeling in my mouth. I took a few sips of the drink and decided if I was tired enough to start falling asleep that I should just call it a night. Standing up with the cup in hand, I headed to the kitchen, ready to dump the contents into the sink. Watching the brown liquid pour into the sink, I turned the faucet on to wash it down the drain, quickly shutting the faucet up when I heard another bang from behind me. Startled, I turned toward the direction of the noise. My apartment isn't very big, and I can see the majority of it from the kitchen. But all I saw was empty space. That and the green digital numbers on the stove that read 302. I had thought that I only fell asleep for a few minutes, so I was surprised to see that several hours had passed. Placing the cup into the sink, I stepped away from the sink and headed back into the living room to see if anything had fallen. The first thing I saw was the remote laying on the carpet, and before I could walk over to pick it up, out of my peripheral, I noticed the TV was on. It looked like as the remote fell, it managed to turn the TV on and turn it to a channel that I didn't have access to. All there was on the screen was a flurry of static. I fixated on the frantic snowfall my TV was displaying for a moment before turning my attention to the remote, satisfied that I at least knew the source of the noise. Pulling myself away from the TV, I started bending over to grab the remote, but when I reached toward it, it was no longer on the carpet. Instead, out of the corner of my eye, I could see it sitting on the table right where I left it, right next to the cup of hot chocolate. Confused, I started standing up straight, realizing the cup still had steam rising from it. Had I totally spaced? Was I dreaming about walking to the kitchen? Was I still dreaming? The flurry of questions in my head quickly dispersed, giving way to complete shock as I caught sight of the TV again. The static that was there a moment ago had vanished, and the TV was once again off and only showing the faint reflection of my living room. What was in that reflection, though, was enough to pull my heart down to my feet. It was dark and faint, but still... There was no doubt in my mind about what I was seeing as I stood there. In the reflection, I could see myself, but I was sitting on the couch, staring at the TV. She was just sitting there. I turned slowly, afraid that I would be able to see myself sitting on the couch beside me, but when I was able to see the couch, it was empty. Turning my head back to the TV revealed that I was still sitting on the couch in the reflection, but instead of staring at the TV still, my copy was staring directly at me. Before I could manage to reach the cup sitting on the table, it flew past me into the kitchen. I could hear it shattering upon impact with the wall and the subsequent chorus of glass and liquid hitting the tiled floor. I nearly jumped out of my skin and fell backward. Luckily, the carpet was pretty soft, and I only got small rug burns on my palms as I managed the impact of my fall. I rolled over to try and see the damage in the kitchen. I had expected to see white shards of glass surrounded by dark lakes of chocolate, but the tiles were spotless. My fingers gripped the carpet fibers as I tried to control my increasingly ragged breath. I closed my eyes tight, trying to gather my composure, trying to convince myself that I was tired and stressed from the previous year. I was having small hallucinations, but that's all that they were. I just needed sleep. I kept repeating thoughts like that in my head, feeling my heart beating slower and my breath becoming calmer. Breathing in and out, letting the chilled air of the apartment fill my lungs. It was starting to work until, when taking a heavy breath in, I caught the powerful scent of hot chocolate. Immediately after the smell hit me, I felt a puff of hot air rush over my face. 
It felt exactly like someone had obnoxiously blown smoke in my face. My eyes opened like my eyelids were being pried apart by crowbars, and the view before me nearly shattered my psyche. It was like I had woken up in front of a mirror. The last thing I expected to see was my own face inches away. My face, but just different enough to not be me. Her eyes met first, and while they shared the same pupil and iris as mine, the white edges were made of the same static I had seen on the TV. As soon as I started to absorb the oddities of her features, she was gone from my vision. It was like someone flicked the TV off, cutting the image. With a frantic might, I quickly pushed myself away from where she was and tried to stand up, but the back of my knee caught something. I should have had enough room to back away between the couch and the table, but I found myself laying on my back. Looking at the pair of legs coming reaching out from the couch, my legs, a familiar hand reached forward and grabbed the TV remote. I could see my copy's fingers pressed down on the power button. The TV returned to the static, but I could see something behind it. An image I couldn't quite make out, hidden behind the spots of white and black. Like one of those magic paintings, the more I stared, the more the image became clear. They were numbers. They looked like the digital numbers on my stove and read 359. I wanted to run for the door, but it felt like my body was glued to the floor as I watched the static version of myself rising from the couch. I could see it clearly the way her body seemed to be composed of the same static texture plaguing the TV. She stood there for a moment, watching the TV the same way I was watching her. As she stood there, I could hear a small bubbling. It was like the silent static started to infect the air. A small hissing that licked my ears as I listened to it. I could feel the pressure building in my head and joints. The copy of myself turned toward me, pupil and iris not completely surrendered to the same static. She walked over to me. The pressure that had built in my body made even my smallest attempts at moving feel like nerve-wracking agony. She bent down slowly to meet my gaze, her face mere inches from mine. I could see how her skin was composed of fibers. It looked like a tattered rug the way her shell barely held together, and underneath was an infinite storm of black and white. An echo of an echo. Staring into her eyes, I felt like I could fall into them. The sea of specks looked as if they stretched on forever. Ten. Her lips pursed, and the number poured out like velvet liquid. Nine. Despite her ghastly appearance, her voice was like no other. Eight. It was my voice, but it sounded so much sweeter. Seven. I could feel my body becoming weaker as the numbers filled my mind. Six. My head was going blank. Five. My thoughts turning to static. Four. Memories all fading. Three, as expected, I could feel myself falling into her gaze. Two, before my head completely gave in, I sucked in, putting my lip between my teeth. One, I bit down as hard as I could on my lip, pain surging through my body as my teeth pierced through the tissue. The nerves fired off, reaching my brain, causing the cloud of static to flush away. And just as soon as she appeared, my copy was gone. With the ache in my joints taken away, my body collapsed to the carpet. I laid there for a while, staring at the ceiling, half expecting the specter to return, but I think it was the only real chance the thing had to get to me. Just as I had counted down until I could start the year anew, it used the hour to try and take me. Hopefully next year I can spend some time with my friends. I don't think she would come around if I wasn't alone. Well, here's to 2021.